Hello, and welcome to Zim Explore. Let's uh, take a look at sockets today in Zim. Sockets are one of the most wondrous things. They get a little complicated, but to start, they can be simple. So let's look at Zim socket. We'll see an example first. Ooh, nice, huh? Let me just reduce this explore sounds, and there's me. Now, my voice is causing this light show on the right-hand side to activate, and we just did this last night. And then on the left-hand side, we have a place where we can enter text. So I'm going to enter explore, and we gave out the URL. You can see that, danzen.com slash fwr. We gave out the URL to the people at the, at, the night, at the nightclub, and they typed things in there and hit submit. And when they did, the socket would send it to over here. And so there it is. Now it says explore. And it was so much fun. People came and just right away they were typing in things and having a great time. So what we'll do is show you how you can type in something here and make it show up on another screen. And indeed, you can open up multiple windows and get that to work. Okay, let's uh, close these ones down. Um, let's see, we'll leave one of them open here and uh, we'll go to the Zim site now. So we hit Zim. And we go into code. And uh, the Zim sockets is one of the modules. Now, here, let me just show them all here. Sometimes, by the way, on the right hand or on the right hand side, you've got a little hide. So if you don't want to keep on scrolling past the, the template, you can just hide any of these. There's the help section. Oh, I don't need help. Uh, here's the tools. You might still want some tools, and then I don't need to see accessibility now, but I know it's here, so I'll hide that one. And hey, now it's a, a faster scroll to get right to the, the libraries that you might be using, such as ZimSocket. So if we click on ZimSocket, like so, it takes us off to uh, the Socket page or mini site here. And how it works is you send object or an object with your properties and then you receive from other people an object with their ID and then inside the object that holds their properties and that's it so this might be one person this is another person you don't receive your own and you receive all of the properties that they have set on the socket and uh, you can send and update your properties neat huh and that means with this system you don't actually need to go and write code on the socket server for the most part. Uh, you can even handle usernames and passwords, but generally that would be better done on the server. So anything you've got, you know, logging in and stuff, then you might need to go and write some things on the server. But uh, for the most part, that doesn't usually come up uh, when you're playing around with sockets. So this is a socket right here. Uh, if we opened up another, let's do it, we open up another tab here and drop that one I guess over to, yeah, well, ah, can't drop it anywhere. I can't drop this tab anywhere. Pick it up, and put it way over here, and then bring it back into view and hit enter. So uh, do you see what's happened there? Sometimes a little tricky running multiple windows here. Make a document. So that's selected, and now if I come and I select here, it's also being selected on that. Isn't this magical? I think it's uh, quite magical. And there's all sorts of examples of sockets of collective coloring, coloring an egg, and your traditional avatar, and your traditional chat. And this is sort of like what we were doing, Zim Remote and Zim Terminal. So it's really neat to have mobile devices these days be able to control something here and have it show up changing over there. So let's dig into the code and show you how to do that. Okay, sound good. Um, one thing is, if you're going to work with sockets, you can use the Zim socket server, and that's another sort of drawback is you need to have sockets uh, set up on your server. We're using Socket IO, <coughs> excuse me, which sits on top of um, Node.js. So we have to have Node.js running on your server. You may or may not have that ability. Um, you can go to these places and find out how to set that up, or you can request that you just start on the Zim server. So you come in here, you put your name in, an email, and a confirmation is going to be sent to you, and then the single word for your app. 
So uh, ours was first wave retrograde FWR. I put my name in here, my name in here. And uh, for instance, if I tried to be you and I hit um, send request oh, T at T uh, and send request, it tells me, oh, sorry, that app name is taken. And that way we can not run into each other's app names. <laughs> okay, so you can come here and get your own app name. All right, so that's a first step. Um, I'll leave this browser hanging around for a bit. Uh, now, we're in, we're in Atom, and I've copied a template into here and called it Zim Explore Sockets. And I also have a Sockets 2 coming up, which uh, will be the two parts of, of this. Here, this is all part of the template, create.js and zim, but we've added three more script calls. One is to socket.io, which is uh, zim socket sort of extends socket.io, much like zim extends create.js. So uh, zim socket really makes it easy. Socket.io is also easy, but it can still be complicated. So here is a link to Zim server URLs, and that means if our socket server ever changes URL and you use this, um, your app will still be up to date. So we're bringing in that. It's just a, a few, hey, the Zim socket server is at this URL. But then I can change that, and um, it will be up to date for you. And then we're bringing in Zim socket 1.0. OK. So this is ZimSocket, which extends Socket.io. All right, so uh, great with those three. And you can see the examples on the ZimSocket site. You can get your own ZimSocket, this one, and host your own Node.js and, and uh, build all of this stuff yourself if you know how to do that. If you don't know how to do it, then I would suggest you just go through that easy form and get an app name. Now we come down into here. This is the the traditional uh, Zim um, template, and we're ready to type in here. What we can do is we can save our socket. Let's increase that for you. Do, 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 do. Our socket is equal to a new Zim. Currently, uh, you need the, the Zim namespace, I believe, on socket. Yeah, we went into what was it, the physics library and adjusted physics and I think 3J, the 3 library as well, 3D library, uh, so that we don't need the namespace, but we haven't gone back into socket and adjusted the namespace there. So that's no big deal. That's This is the only place it really shows up. Uh, Zim.socket, like that. And then what we do is we pass in um, the Zim socket URL that will connect you to um, a, a variable. So inside of this one right here, well, you know, we can zog it. How about we do that? We'll just comment this out and we will zog that. Zog the Zim socket URL. It comes from that Zim server URLs library there. So we have that here and then we refresh or open in a browser and uh, we um, find the F12. And that happens to be the Zim socket URL right there. Okay, so that's coming from that, from this guy right here, the Zim server URLs. Okay, so uh, where were we? We're asking for a uh, Zim socket. We need the URL to the server for that socket. And then we need our keyword. So, oh, I didn't make a keyword for this example. Well, we'll piggyback on the keyword FWR, I guess, because that's the one that we used last night. Okay, but that's where your keyword would go. And that's it. So now you've made a socket. Uh, what you need to do now is find out if it's ready. So that is a ready event, socket dot on. You can type it, you can do it on ready. Call this function. Ooh, isn't this exciting? Like exploring. And then we will zog uh, that we are connected to our socket. 
So this is one thing that comes up. You can also get some data. Uh, you can get some data and stuff like that um, from the socket already, like a history of. If you're in the chat, you can get a history to find out what was uh, already happening. So there's that one, and you can also get an error message if you want if you're not connecting to the socket like so. So that looks like error, and then you can say connect error or something like that. So let's save that up and see what happens to our socket uh, in our browser. So we refresh here, explore, hmm, yeah, I think this is it. And we F12 connected. That's a good sign. So there it is saying it's connected and there's the Zim socket module connected. Okay, great. Now let's build something where we can type. So now we're back. Probably we should build that in once we've connected. It's kind of like saying, hey, frame, are you ready? Yeah, okay. Then we do stuff inside the ready event right here. So here we are all in the ready event. Now that we've accessed the socket, hey, socket, are you ready? Now we start coding in the in this part. So we can say var uh, in, uh, well, we'll call it text, I guess, is equal to a new text area, like so. And we can dot center that on the stage. Actually, I, I, I got so tired of always capitalizing. For some reason, it just happens to be my fingers. Oh, always capitalizing the <laughs> stage. <laughs> and then I said, all right, let's just make it by default center on the stage. So I have to get used to not trying to type the stage. We don't need to put it in there anymore. But anyway, that's basically centering it on the stage like so. And we should have, um, well, we could do it on enter, but we may as well make a little button that goes underneath that. So our button is equal to a new button, like so, and um, we will give it um, dimensions of something like 280 or something like that. And how about we say send? Yes, ooh, that sounds good. And we will dot center that on the stage. Hey, and we will dot move that down a little bit. So nothing in the X and down. Uh, how much? That text area is probably not too big. So I will move it down 100. And let's take a look and see what this looks like. Um, this one right here. And we refresh. Well, it's not bad. It's a little bit dark, and that's a little bit small. <laughs> but uh, there we go. Um, a little bit bigger if we make that. But okay, so we could make. I think it's a size. How about we just say size colon? I don't know, forty or something like that. And uh, we'll change the adjustment. And instead of being on black, let's be on how about light. Save that up and. Be a little bit happier hopefully so we refresh here test okay that's good enough huh oh I just don't I, I almost can't live with rounded corners now I don't know how about you guys yes no maybe uh, corners the heck is way the heck down there though so uh, with colon 200 height colon 80 oh and text colon send and corner colon zero. There we go. Okay, that's enough playing around. Aside from that one bracket, we will play no more. But what do we do when we press the button? So that would be button dot on. Um, click or mouse down, doesn't really matter. Call this function. And then we would say, well, we would want to send to the socket. So we would go socket dot. And now we're wondering what do we what do we put here? So you might be wondering, like, okay, probably send, maybe it's send data, I'm not quite sure. So what you can do is you can find the URL. There's no uh, documentation per se, as in the Zim docs, but the documentation's all within Zim socket. 
So you copy the Zim socket like so, go into a browser and hit enter. And we can scroll down, we'll make this bigger for us. We can scroll down and here's a whole bunch of stuff. So Zim socket, the socket class, and what parameters, server, app name, room name, etc. What are we in? Why am I wrapping? I'd rather see this without wrapping. I don't know how to. I'm just viewing source. Oh, I know what I can do. Why don't we? Well, we'll just. We we won't spend too much time on on this. The methods are change room, uh, sync, request time. Um, there must be more than that. Setting your properties, getting properties. Oh, right. So uh, set property right here. So here's a way set property and then the property name and the property value. And that will then get distributed. Or you can set properties. And instead of um, setting individual uh, an individual property, uh, you can set in an object of properties to set. There's also get properties. So we might need to get properties. So get my property, get other properties, uh, get the latest properties. There's one of those. Let's see, or is that a uh, getting latest information? Yeah, getting latest value for a property name. I bet you will want to remember that one. Okay, so we'll leave that open and we'll come back here and uh, <laughs> set proper T. Probably we just want to send one property. So socket dot set property. Oh, I can do it prop property, and in round bracket the name of the property first. We'll just call it text, I guess, and then the value. Well, <laughs> okay, this is going to be awfully silly. It's the the value is uh, going to be in the label, or sorry, in our text area, which is text, and that <laughs> happens to be a text property. <laughs> well, there's no doubt that we are sending some text. So the property that we're going to send via the socket is called text or whatever we want to call it. Um, if you were wanting to collect somebody's name, it could be name or whatever. And then the value that we're sending is the text area's text property. Okay, great. And we might want to say that um, this has been sent. Now there's a neat thing that we can do with the button. Uh, the button, well maybe we won't look at that now. It's so nice though. The button has a wait state and the wait state can change and, and then go away. Should I show it? Okay, yeah sure. Let's, let's have a look at it. We'll drop these down into multiple lines. We are exploring after all, right? Just so that, you know, we're eh, paying homage to exploring. Let's let's do this. So we go to Zim and type it, or into the docs and we hit button. And here is wait, wait time, and wait color. So uh, these are parameters and we will use these three weight, weight time, and weight color. And there's a roll weight color, but we won't bother with that. So weight. Then what we can do is say what we, we want. Um, sent. How about like that. And what will happen is when the button's pressed, it will go to that and wait time, and it will stay there for how about one second. And then we will supply a wait color, and this is the color of the button when we're waiting. How about we go frame dot green? like so. Okay, does that look good? And now when we press the button, it should say sent uh, for a little bit of time, and then it goes back to send. Oh, well, that's kind of silly. So it's send, and then uh, <laughs> the sent is <laughs> a little bit close. They might not notice that the, T, the D has changed <laughs> into a T. Uh, why don't we just say okay? <laughs> I like that. Uh, now we don't actually know it's okay. What 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 you can do is if it's not okay, if something breaks, then in this on thing we can see is something breaking and turn that off so you can clear you can clear that. Uh, but we won't explore. <laughs> we won't explore that far. We'll just assume everything for now is working. Okay, so that's our button side. Let's just try it. Uh, not much will happen. Do, 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 do. And it goes this one we're in, and we refresh here. We go test, and we hit press, and it goes OK, and it goes back. Oh, why does that say press? Text is send. 
Oh, label. There, my apologies. So that was the wrong parameter name. Uh, and by the way, we would know that. Let's explore the console, F12. And here it says bad argument text. So with our button, bad argument text. So when we had text here, that was a bad argument for the button. It should have been label because we can pass in a label. Now the label itself, if we pass in a zim label, the label has a text property. Okay. Okay, so we are still though sending a text property and it's the text property of this text field. That's where we're getting our data from. We can check that. Why don't we check that? You should always do that. Like before you send something across a socket, you may as well, hey, are we sending the right, you know, what we expect? Can we get the right data? So we just do a quick zog in there and we come back here, refresh, we put in the word test, we hit now note that that says send, and it says OK, and here's our console.log of the word test. So I think we're all good. Now, I believe that the error, like if there was an error, if there were an error in that, then I believe it calls this error right here. And maybe not, maybe it's a send error or something like that. Maybe you could look that up. OK, let's uh, start the other side. So on the other side, we want to do roughly the same thing. So here we'll, we'll, we'll make something where we can receive it. We'll make a label, var label is equal to a new label, like so. And we will put um, some just uh, hello there or something like that into our label. And we'll dot center that one on the stage. Oh, I don't have to put stage, nor do I have to put sage or whatever else I usually type and thing. And we've got a stage.update, and let's uh, have a look at this one. Open in browser. Well, I think it's black, and I have a black label. So let's uh, change this one to frame. Hello. Hmm. That should uh, show up now. Hello there. Okay, so what we're hoping to do is come back to this one, type in test and hit send, and have it show up here. Agreed? Okay, we can split that into multiple sides if we want to see it happen live. All right, so that means we'll need to set up our socket on this side too. So we can just go copy, wasn't much, was it? Uh, Socket.onready, oh, and the making of the socket. So there's our socket now, and we can use the same URL and the same keyword. Obviously, that's important, our app name, we call that. And then there's the socket on ready. We can zog connected. We should also, at this point, probably grab the data and sort of see what that was. I mean, that's one way you can do it from grabbing the data in here. I think that gives you data about your connection and stuff. It may not give you every, we can just ask for the socket thing. So we can just say, hey, um, label dot text is equal to socket dot current value, something about a current value, get current, uh, can't remember, can you remember? How's your memory? Explore sockets, uh, this one right here, getting socket properties. Uh, history, getting latest information right here, get latest value, and then the property name. Get latest value of what? Of text. So what this is, is a lot of people could be on here and they could all be setting their property of text, but get latest value will get whoever set their text latest will come in here. And we don't have to do that. We could go get specific uh, people's values and find out what their text is to do a chat or something. But in this case, uh, we, we just wanted to grab whoever typed or entered uh, a phrase. We just wanted that one to show up. And so it was pretty straightforward. So what we're doing here is we're getting the latest value as we load. Um, now, the socket needs to be open. So if, if this were still open right here, 
which I think it is, then as I refresh now, we should see the word test uh, if we stage.update. So remember that this stage.update happens maybe after the socket's ready, so we need a stage.update in there. Okay, so we save that, which probably means we don't need one really here. Boop. So we'll get rid of that one for now. Okay, so the socket, when it's ready, it's going to grab the latest value and it's going to put it in the labels text. Do we have a label? Yeah, there it is. So we save that, we come back here, and we want this one right here, and we refresh. And we've got an error. So check the error. Missing a bracket on line 60. Ah, I thought that might have been missing. So we save that, and we come back here, and we refresh. And it says test. Now note that that test is not centered. Did you notice that? <laughs> The issue is the label itself is not centered, so this is the text. And like that, that information was longer than the other one. Like so. And a line, a line colon quote center. Refresh there, and now yeah, that's probably centered. OK, and it's grabbing it. Now, if we change it to something else, uh, something else, like so, and hit send, sending something else, but over here, it has not changed. So we haven't worked out that part. All we did was when we load, we're getting that information. So we refresh here. Now it's something else, but we want... Um, we want it so that when we receive data, and so that's another event, it's in here, socket dot on, we're nearly there, uh, data, comma, we call a function, and in the round brackets we collect our data, like that. So this event will run every time we receive data or every time somebody has sent something to the socket, this will trigger. And then we can ask for information, like what got sent. So uh, we can ask for the property. Uh, so data, well, let's just put it in there. It's, it's very similar to this, although this one would work too. And we need a stage.update. That's interesting. If, if it's this simple, we could have just called the same function. <laughs> but, uh, well, maybe not. Okay, oh yeah, we could have and just not use the data. But if we want to use the data rather than the latest value, so this would work as well, but um, then we can say, give me data.text. So what is sent is information about the data. So let's do two things. We'll just grab the data's text property because that's the property that we sent or that was sent. We're putting it into our label and we're updating. Let's also zog what data is so we get a better idea. So we save that and refresh here, like so. Um, now what we can do is come back to this one and change it instead of something else. We can say, uh, <laughs> how about something exciting? We um, explored, I think we're in explore. Well, let's put Zim Explore. Zim Explore, exploring sockets. There we go. Obviously, we made this text area a little small, huh? And we hit send. It says Zim Exploring Sockets, and over here it says Zim Exploring Sockets. Oh, which we, <laughs> which we didn't get to see live, did we? So let's uh, pick this up and move it into the side here. And we can say, wow. Did you think sockets would be that easy? Are you ready? Send. Wow. Whoa. Zim Explore of Sockets. I am Dr. Abstract. Have a great day or night. Ciao.